All right, listeners, welcome back. Uh, we were speaking with uh, Wanda last week um, in regards to Parkinson's, uh, the possible benefits of CBD and how it may be beneficial. We also talked about all the wonderful uh, groups and um, activities that Wanda is in charge of. Uh, she's been with Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System since 2008 hired as the supervisor of patient information for the emergency care center. She then went on to supervise the newly established patient assistant program where uninsured patients were helped by either finding a payer source or completing an application for financial assistance. Um, Sarasota Memorial Hospital then created a much needed position of outpatient care coordinator which would not only help patients navigate the ever-growing outpatient services, but also help them connect the dots from inpatient to outpatient. Um, currently, Wanda is in charge of uh, many clinics, uh, stroke wellness clubs, stroke support group, cooking classes, uh, Parkinson's wellness clubs, distinguished speakers, events in conjunction with the Neuro Challenge Foundation for Parkinson's, mobility challenged groups, uh, outpatients, cardiac rehabilitation, as well as speaking events. Um, Wanda is a uh, happily married 40 years and a mother of three, very uh, self-sufficient children and a grandmother of six. Welcome back, Wanda. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. This is a great topic. We've got lots of wonderful services. Yes. Um, uh, I. One thing we didn't talk about last time was the two resources they can go to online, and that is the calendar of events of all those things that we do, uh, Parkinson education support groups, uh, spinal cord injury support groups, um, stroke support and education can be found at www.smh.com. If you go to calendar, we keep everything up on our calendar. And also the neurochallenge.org uh, is a wonderful place to go, or Parkinson's, neurochallenge.org. You can find their list of events. Another great educational opportunity we have coming up is January 18th, 2020. It's a Saturday at the Sarasota Memorial Clark Road facility. We have a big, our annual symposium. We have wonderful speakers coming, so it's a great place to get some additional information on therapies and exercises. We have two neurologists speaking. And you'll get a sampling of our therapies, uh, the Speak Out program during the middle of the morning. So check that out. Awesome. Um, so when we talk about Parkinson's and possibly CBD, possibly not, um, what are two things that you have evidence on with the Parkinson patients? Uh, was it mood and sleep? Mood and sleep is when we have the support groups, you know, after they've checked it out with their physician and interactions with other medications, start slow. Um, the two things that I've heard them talk about in support groups, which is where they get to talk about anything they want, uh, is the it helps alleviate their non-motor symptoms, uh, especially the mood and sleep disturbances they experience with Parkinson's. Uh, mood, especially the anxiety that comes with it and the apathy and if it's a husband or a wife and their spouse has Parkinson's, they get very frustrated that they, the apathy. And so all these wonderful programs of exercise and physical therapy, and then they just can't get this person out of the chair and out of the house. And so some of them have started with some CBDs to help reduce that anxiety and apathy that they were feeling so that they could inspire them to Check out the benefits of some of the other programs. Um, and, of course, sleep is, can be a big issue for people with Parkinson's, uh, whether it's insomnia or the opposite side of excessive sleepiness where they're sleeping all the time. Um, they have a lot of sleep attacks because of REM sleep disorders. So some of those items are where we see them discuss the CBDs. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, so let's talk about, uh, you know, lifestyle changes, uh, with some of your patients after they've been diagnosed, um, what, what, what would you recommend and, 
what have you learned along your journey uh, that's beneficial for them to learn about early on so it may help uh, with them keeping that quality of life? There is a lot they can change in their lifestyle that can really promote better health and a um, better process for managing their Parkinson's. So healthy eating, they need to start with healthy gut. We see a lot of people working on better gut health. Um, Some people say that Parkinson's can be triggered in that gut health. So eating healthy, but besides that, Uh, A lot of the Parkinson medications lose their efficacy if they're eaten within like an hour before or after a protein. So taking their Parkinson meds and then having bacon and eggs for breakfast, not so good. So you need protein. It's a muscle builder. Um, But we promote more less towards the beginning of the day, more of your protein at the end of the day, Uh, maybe when you're a little more sedentary and home. Uh, exercise is key. In fact, the quote that we get from the neurologists are exercise is every bit as important as the pills you take. Everyone wants that quick, easy solution. Just give me the pill and make me better. But Parkinson's, it requires getting up and moving because it's kind of a move it or lose it. So if your muscles are stiff and rigid, sitting isn't going to help get them moving. We want to stay healthy. So that encompasses things like avoiding falls. Because if you go down, Parkinson patients hit the ground pretty hard because they don't crumble. They kind of just fall like a tree in the forest sometimes, which can mean some damage. So we want to avoid falls maybe with getting out the rugs from the house. An occupational therapist can help with that. Reevaluating grab bars by toilets and in showers. Uh, Little tiny pets underfoot are always a hazard. So everything we can do to avoid falls, which also means medication compliance because there's on times and off times and uh, forgetfulness can be a component of Parkinson's. So forgetting to take a med can really set you up for more rigidity, possible fall. Um, We want to keep them healthy. We want you to get your flu shots. We want you to see your neurologist probably every three to six months, depending on what they recommend and what's going on. Uh, And again, classes that specifically work towards that cardio and left-right motion for your brain. So the pedaling classes, the boxing, uh, health fit swapping movers class is a great one. Um, Tai Chi, yoga, those are all wonderful exercises. Lifestyle changes means incorporating all that into your schedule, not just You know, for me, I live and die by my calendar. If it's on my calendar, I get to it. So they really have to make sure they're putting on their calendar and making time for exercise, rehab therapies, medication, healthy eating. It can go a long, long way in better quality of life for someone with Parkinson's, though. That's the upside. Plus, you meet new friends, do fun things. So it's not not bad. Nice. Um, What, what, what is some things that um, a person with Parkinson's may experience? Um, nausea, appetite loss, uh, like what are some things that they may experience? People with Parkinson's can experience things like tremors um, in their hands or legs usually or postural where the hand just kind of, you can get, you can get Parkinson-isms, you can have a tremor without it being Parkinson's. Um, and some people, tremors come early. Some, it come, my, from my mom who had Parkinson's for 30 years, uh, tremors didn't start till very, very late in her journey. Muscular um, is a big one. So stiff muscles, difficulty standing, difficulty walking, uh, involuntary movements, again, the muscle rigidity. So for my mom example, she got very stooped because she was no longer standing straight because of some muscle rigidity, which then affected balance uh, and coordination. So we don't want that because then you have a fall, Um, slow body movements, a shuffling. And when you shuffle, your toes are hitting the ground first. And so that just sets you up again for a fall. Uh, Sleep disturbances, REM cycle, um, they do a lot of flailing and acting out in their sleep. Fatigue can be... um, Part of a Parkinson's, they get sleepy, that that dizziness, restlessness, 
uh, cognitive. The brain is a muscle, just like your arms and legs. So we need to make sure we're interactive with social engagement, good sleep, uh, puzzles, whether it's crossword puzzles or Sudoku, uh, working on learning to play an instrument. In all those, do those neurons that need to be firing to keep the cognition, the brain, you know, a brain exercise. If it's an exercise, it just can't be easy. It has to be a little bit difficult. Um, people with Parkinson's will experience some speech issues, soft speech, difficulty speaking and being heard. Um, also, the swallowing, those same throat muscles. That's why we have the therapies of LSBT loud and speak out. Uh, sometimes the very first symptom when people look back and say, oh, my, was loss of smell. You know, they no longer smell grass that's just been mowed or the fact that the sauce on the stove smells so good. Um, a blank stare, we call it that Parkinson stare, where, and that's partly that facial muscles. They're not sad or maybe upset with you, but they just don't smile as well. We have to remind them to smile um, so that they don't get that Parkinson mask. Also, the tiny, tiny, small handwriting, if people have a tiny, it's getting very micro, micro steps, micro writing, micro voice, you know, those are all symptoms. Vision is one that we don't talk about quite as much, but when they're in support groups, I find out that they have eight, nine pairs of glasses because they just can't, they either, the eyes are tremoring a little bit, they're not able to follow a line. Or they can't find the next line. I know that was a big issue for my mom as well and for many others. We recommend uh, after diagnosis that they make an initial appointment with a neuro-ophthalmologist, and we have some really good ones in the area. And then, of course, we hear sleep is an issue, restless leg symptom syndrome. Um, I think I've touched on a lot of them, probably more than you were expecting. <laughs> no, that was great. Um I feel like some of the things that you were mentioning, we talked about this last week as well, is where the topical relief could possibly help kind of loosen some of those things up, like loosen some of those muscles up um, and kind of work in that way to be able to get them a little bit more uh, mobility, obviously incorporating that with exercise and first and foremost, before anything, talking to their doctor, um, that the topical relief for a lot of what you were talking about could really be uh, super beneficial for like a patient with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even anyone with just restless leg syndrome, which is, you know, can be part of Parkinson's. But I don't have Parkinson's, but I have restless leg syndromes. Not all the time, but once in a while. I haven't tried it for that, but I could see where that could be a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we get you some product. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, I do, and it has a wonderful peppermint smell to it. Oh, nice. I used it on my stiff shoulder, so it, and it worked really nice, and it smelled a lot better than the old menthol ones where everyone wonders, you know, why you smell that way. <laughs> right, so that topical is our 2,000 milligram uh, topical relief cream, and just a very little bit goes a long way. And is that what, is that what was applied to you at the, at the show that, that you were at? Yep, yep. You put a little bit on my left shoulder, which was stiff from just computer use and dragging heavy equipment around. And, and I not only smelled fresh and wonderful, my shoulder nerve just relaxed and felt so much better that afternoon. Thank you very much, Stacey. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome to hear. Um, so... So what are some other things that, and, and by the way, Wanda, I am so excited to tell my customers that come into the store about all the wonderful programs that you have uh, put together um, from the cooking class to uh, all the other communities that you've created. Um, because we, we get a lot of customers that come in and I feel like when they come through our doors, they almost like drop all their walls and they're just like, they're at a point where they're help like, me. <laughs> yes, I need help, you know? And it's like, um, you know, we can offer them uh, the education that we have here in the store. That's something we're very big on is education. Um, and we do that, but then something even more that they can take um, and join a group and talk to other people that are kind of going through what they're going through. Um, I feel like that's another really important part to it. So I'm uh, happy to say well, that. 